Hello and welcome to module four for Fido. Uh, welcome back, it's good to have you. Uh, so just to recap what we've done in module two, um, three. sorry, module three, uh, we looked at uh, Socrates' distinction between the three different kind of souls, right? Yep. So, and what happens to each of these kind of souls after death. Yep. So the first soul was the bad soul. So if you're too in love with your body um, and practice gluttony and excessive fondness for wine, yep. you can get trapped in the body of an ass or, or a... Donkey. Um, yeah. Sorry, a donkey. Or what was the other one? A um, raven? Yeah. 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 Um, so these kind of supposedly inferior kind of animals. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, when that's what your soul is going to latch on to because it's gotten so used to yeah. uh, what those kind of animals enjoy. Um, the good souls, so the ones who practice civic virtue, like yeah. being a good citizen and being kind to others and all that kind of jazz, um, they're more likely to, their soul is going to attach to uh, the body maybe of another human or maybe of a, a more gentle creature like an insect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, however, the best type of soul... Um, will go forward, um, go onwards from this world and go to live with the gods. And what type of soul is that? One who has used philosophy mm. and thinking and reasoning to make sure his body isn't attached. To, yep. Sorry, his soul isn't attached to the body. Yep. It doesn't become, doesn't pay court to it. And it is get very much like bodily. Descartes, isn't it? With... Um, the, like the pure mental scrutiny, the pure yeah, use yeah. of the soul and the mind yeah. um, without interacting or getting confused by the, the body. body. Yeah, that's, that's the best kind yeah, of soul. Yeah, very good. Um, sorry, I was going to mention one more thing, mm -hmm. um, which I've now forgotten. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll come back to it. So, um, now... Uh, Socrates is going to have a bit of a conversation with Simeus and Thebes, his two buds, about um, a couple of ob objections they have. And in particular, what they're objecting to is the earlier idea that we looked at in about module two, I think, um, where we talked about how the soul is the master, and because of the master, it's the master, it's divine. Um, Divine meaning, like, immortal? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, really, what they're raising objections to is they don't think, for various reasons, that the soul can be immortal. Um, and so, what... Um, uh, he starts with Simeus's objection, and what Simeus's objection rests on is that he thinks that the soul must perish um, before... So it isn't immortal because it perishes before the body does. Mm. And to, do, to prove that, he uses an analogy. Now, what's an analogy, Miss Fitz? Oh, gosh, one of my favourite things in the world. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we may have talked about this before, I can't remember, but an analogy is basically uh, a comparison between the two things. Mm. But the, the purpose of the comparison is to highlight a similarity. Yeah. So you may be comparing two very different things, but you're making a point about something. So a good example of an analogy is to say, um, well, maybe Armstrong would make the analogy that the human mind is like a computer. Okay. Now, is the human mind exactly like a computer? No, they're obviously two very different kind of things. Yeah. You know, but they've got something very important in common, which is that they can both be used to uh, process, process very complex information. Yeah. So can you see how that's a comparison between two different things that highlights something very similar yeah. about them? Great. And the analogy that Simeus is going to use is comparing a soul to the attunement of an instrument. And so the body is compared to the body of the instrument. And so if you're on page 127 and paragraph 86A, at the top of that paragraph, he very quickly goes through the characteristics of the soul slash attunement and the body slash strings. And he... Yeah. yeah. Do we need to talk about what an attunement is? Or are you... Yeah, so yeah. I guess we could quickly say, so the attunement... Um, so, I'm sorry to interrupt again. Yeah. The instrument that he's talking about is a lyre. Yes. So, which is like an old-fashioned kind of string instrument, right? Yes. Yeah, so L-Y-R-E. Yes. Yeah. And the attunement is basically like the... 
It's actually music really hard to explain. Quality. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't even define it for their glossary. I had to leave it blank. Yeah. An attunement... Okay, so this is what I understand an attunement to be. So you've got the musical instrument. It's like a physical, corporeal object, um, right? That's the lyre. Yeah. And then the attunement is like making sure that the strings are in tune yep. so that a nice sound can be produced. Yep. Okay. So if so, the, it could be a good attunement where a good well, sound... Oh, could I? Uh, well, you're getting... Skipping it, ahead. Yeah, you're skipping yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ignore that. But basically, how are we going to define an achievement to work forward the the sound that it makes I okay guess. so the, the tune, fact that it is tune. in tune yeah. to make a particular sound yeah okay yeah so he mm. he attaches the characteristics um of an attunement being invisible obviously you can't see that sound so he's kind of linking back to what socrates said before about the nature it, of the soul exactly so it's invisible or unseen as we were saying it's divine um, Why is it divine? Because it doesn't... Well, he yeah, just says it, which is, again... Um, oh, he's saying it's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So, the so is okay, so divine in terms of beauty. incorporeal, it's not physical. Yeah. Altogether beautiful, even divine. So it's something a little bit special and yeah. magical. The yeah. fact that it is attuned to create a certain note. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of the strings, they're obviously bodily, so um, or corporeal, so you can touch them and feel them and see mm-hmm. them. Mm. And they are composite, so the strings and um, the instrument as a whole are all different parts coming together mm-hmm. to make up the whole, and it's mortal in that it will perish and die. So it can be broken and it will decay. Yeah. So can you see, like, I guess... It's obvious, but the analogy is, just to restate it, the body of the instrument is like the, the body of a person yep. and the attunement is like their soul. Yeah. So even though uh, Simeus has said that the attunement is like the soul, there's one um, way in which he says that the attunement is not like the soul that Socrates has described. So remember yeah. at the start, Socrates describes the soul as incomposite yeah. and the body as composite. Yeah. Composite meaning um, made up of different parts. So yeah. Socrates has said the soul is not made up of different parts. It's all the one thing. Yeah. Um, Simeus here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he's saying that the soul is, sorry, the attunement is composite. It's not yeah. incomposite. And, and by extension, the soul is composite. So his version yep. of the soul is a composite one. Okay. So if you were to do a question where you were comparing um, Socrates' version of the soul with Simeus' version of the soul, this would be a key, key point of difference. Is so that can, can you explain why he thinks the soul, is comp- sorry, the soul and the attunement are composite? Yeah. Um, so I guess he's just... He's saying that the attunement that the soul-like thing is so dependent on the bodily parts of the instrument that it kind of becomes entwined in it and relies upon it and they Mm. become part of the actual attunement itself. Because I guess if you think like when you're tuning an instrument, you've got to get those bodily parts in a particular way to achieve the the attunement. Yeah, because if... Well, if the strings of a lyre did not exist and weren't kind of pulled at the correct tension yes the attunement could not exist yes so that means that the attunement is kind of intrinsically part of the lyre yeah exactly the physical part of the lyre and so that brings us on really well to his I guess ultimate conclusion that um, when the instrument breaks so as love an excellent depiction in this random cartoon I found. <laughs> um, as the instrument breaks, yes, it will really make a unicorn sad, but it also means that the attunement has perished, okay? Mm. No more music is possible because the instrument's broken. Um, and the, but the, the broader point that he's making following on from this is that... Um, those, the, that, those parts of the instrument, they'll stay there for a while. They'll take a bit of time. They're not going to disappear straight away. Mm. They're going to decay eventually, but they're not going to disappear straight away. Whereas the attunement 
it's gone. As soon as those strings break and no more music can be played, yep. the attunement or the soul-like thing is gone. Okay, so this is just that argument I was just speaking about kind of written out. So Simeus believes that the attunement is the same thing as a soul. He believes that the attunement is lost um, before the body of the instrument decays. So it's lost pretty much straight away on an instrument breaking. So as a result, he concludes that the soul must perish before the body does. And I guess as an extension of that, he's concluding that the, because the soul perishes, um, it can't be immortal. Okay. Okay, so now Socrates is going to um, respond to these arguments of Simeus and also of Sebes, but we'll touch on Sebes particularly in the, ne- particularly in the next um, module. So the first um, objection Socrates raises of Simeus is he says to him, well, look, um, we, we've established previously and it's actually in a part of um, the text that we don't cover. But mm. he says, we've established previously that the soul exists before it even enters a human being, a body. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, and he's basing that on the fact that this previous argument called learning is recollection, um, which is the idea that the soul knows things before entering the body. Would that be your understanding? Yep. So basically I take it that in a part of the text we haven't read, mm. they've had some debate about what learning is. Yep. And they've come to the conclusion that learning is actually not... It's not it doesn't involve learning new things. It just involves recalling or yep. recollecting stuff that the soul has previously known. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then he goes, well, in your example, Simeus, in the case of the lyre and the attunement, its bodies and strings, the lyre's bodies and strings, come into existence. We have that before it obtains its attunement. So it's, um, it's a different order to what they'd previously established of soul and then body. And then in oh, Simeus's okay. example, it's going body and then soul. So the conclusion is the soul cannot be the same as an attunement. Yep. So, and Simeus quickly agrees with that because he's previously, in that part of the text we haven't looked at, he's previously completely accepted and yep. loved this idea that learning is recollection. So he goes, of course, of course, an, an, yep. a liar and an attunement can't be the same because, As a soul, yeah. because the soul has to come first. Okay. Now, I just really quickly, yeah. um, because we don't normally really go into evaluation on the podcasts, but mm. um, I personally have a bit of an issue with this argument yeah. because it's kind of just taking for granted that the soul exists before the body. Yeah. Like, it... We haven't read the part of the text that, where they actually prove that. Yeah. So I don't know if I should trust the fact that, um, you know, we sh- uh, the soul exists before entering the body and just has this recollection of stuff that it's learned in previous lives. That might not be true. Yeah, definitely. That's r- well, that's something that we should definitely explore more in class. Yeah. But Socrates is not done yet. Simeus has completely surrendered and been like, no, I'm wrong. But Socrates is like, no, nah, I've got three more <laughs> objections. I've got three more rebuttals, buddy. I'm going to slam Classic you. Classic Socrates. This one's super basic, <laughs> hence the basic slide. Um, an achievement, according to Simeus, does not have the capacity to be different from its composite elements. What does so, that mean? Well, I guess it's meaning that the attunement is going to be completely dependent yep. and completely in the model of yep. the composite element. So, so like we were talking before, the strings being, in, being in a particular way to tune, to create such an attunement. So if you pull the strings in a different way, the attunement would be different. Yes, but it would be the same as the body. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, meaning the attunement is completely dependent upon how you treat the physical thing. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, as we've previously discussed, the soul can be in a completely different form yeah. to, to, the, to the body. And therefore, the soul can't be the same as an attunement. Yeah, and you know, so his conclusion here is, again, all, his conclusions for all of these objections is going to be the soul is not an attunement. You know, I actually think this might be a circular argument, but 
maybe we this can, particular objection. Yeah, because isn't he assuming that he knows? Isn't the whole point of the argument to prove what the soul is? Is the soul an attunement or not? Yeah. But then he's assuming that the soul does not have the qualities of an attunement. He's assuming that the soul is something which can be different from its composite elements. Okay. But so, hasn't he previously established that with his theory of like the forms and the form that the soul is in? Yeah, I know, but is, what, then why are they having this argument? Like, they're trying to prove something about the soul mm. by using a premise that takes for granted that they already know what the soul is. Okay. Yeah, I just think the whole thing seems a bit pointless. But are we treating it too much in isolation when really it's part of like a broader thing? A broader thing, maybe. Yeah, I just, Socrates' arguments here just kind of annoy me because I think they just assume all this stuff about well, the soul goes through different lives and. Okay. The yep. soul, yeah, you know what I mean? It's kind of making a lot of assumptions, so I don't know if we can necessarily trust the conclusion. Okay. Now, there's two more counter arguments that Socrates makes against Simeus's idea that the soul is an attunement. Um, We've just been rereading them, and look, to put it simply, they're a bit crazy. Um, because, and the reason that they're a bit crazy is because they're kind of a bit all over the place. Like, um, th there's two more counter arguments, and they're both kind of like intertwined with each other on page 136 to all the way to 100, uh, page 139. So, if you're reading those pages and you're a bit confused, I don't blame you, but we're going to try to um, explain this as simply as possible. So, the third rebuttal that Socrates makes of Simeus's attunement argument is this. Uh, an attunement does not direct the bodily parts, but it, rather it is directed by the bodily parts. So, what this means is that, um, for example, with a lyre, the bodily parts, also known as the strings, have to be, um, if they're tuned in a particular way, then the lyre, ha the attunement has to sound in a particular way. Yeah. You know? It can't not play a particular tune yeah. if it's stroked in a particular way and if it's tuned in a, in a particular way. Yeah. On the other hand, however, um, the soul... Um, the, so, sorry, the body of a person does not direct the soul of a person. Yes. So the body of the, the lyre directs the attunement, but the body of a person doesn't direct the soul. In yeah. fact, it's the opposite way around. Yeah. So, for example, your soul can tell your body not to drink, even if it's thirsty. Yeah. Um, so to not do something bodily, I guess. Yep. So therefore, they can't be the same thing, because they do two different things. Yeah. So this is the... Um, just the same argument again, or the same rebuttal, but it just uses this example of Homer's Odyssey. Yeah, this is on page is 139. Like, it's just another yeah. example of um, the soul directing the body. Yeah. Right? Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah. yeah, which is a classic... Homer's Odyssey is a classic Greek text. Mm. Um, and the, the, I guess the point the quote is making is that um, he was able to hit the soul of Homer, I guess, was able to be like... Um, Odysseus. Oh, sorry. Well, I haven't read Homer's Sorry, I was Odyssey. once in a, in, in a uh, homemade video about Odysseus, which won a competition. So of that's, co that's Of course you I... were. It explains <laughs> a lot. I won $60. It explains a lot, Miss Fitch. Um, so, the I've, whole I've point... Excuse me. <laughs> the really whole good. point... It was a musical. Stop it. <laughs> the whole point is that... Odysseus, or whoever, is being like, um, come on, my heart, you can do this, you have endured worse, I am strong, I so am the soul, man. So the soul is man. telling the body to yes. get a grip. Yeah, okay. and it can do that because it's a man. Okay, final objection, it, or rebuttal, sorry, is that to poor old Simeus, um, is that... There is the possibility for this lyre example or analogy that he's using. Mm. There is an impossibility for that instrument to be more tuned or less tuned. So it will still be tuned in some way. So mm -hmm. there's still the attunement, yep. but it's either perfectly tuned, so yep. more tuned and sounds really lovely, or less tuned, so it's a bit out of tune. Yep. In comparison, on the other hand or whatever, the soul, um, you cannot have more soul or less yes. soul. You've just got a soul. 
Yeah. Therefore, you the soul is not an achievement. Yeah, you know what I've also noticed about a lot of these arguments? What? Okay, so I reckon there's an assumption being made, also known as a missing premise. So, he, for example, in this one, he's going, a liar can be more or less tuned, but you cannot have more or less soul. That's premise one. And his conclusion is, therefore, an attunement is not the same thing as a soul. Ooh. Right? Wasn't what you just said... Sorry, wasn't premise one of what you just said actually two premises? Uh, it could be. But in either case, there's a missing premise, which is that if one thing is more tuned... Sorry, if one thing can be more or less tuned and another thing can not be more or less of itself, okay. then those two things are different things altogether. Yeah. Is that necessarily true? I don't know. That's hurting my head. Let's All leave right. it at that. What a lovely <laughs> we'll ending. We'll talk about it in class. Poor children. Farewell. Bye.